Welcome to another video by Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. Before we start this video, I want to give a special call out to all of my subscribers, my members to this channel, and anyone who passes the message on to come learn a little bit more about Lame and become a little better. Anyway, this video is a special request from one of my members. They asked, how can I use Chat GPT to be able to search Splunk? And you know what? I thought, I'll, let's do that. And so I'm going to give some examples of some good ways of doing it and some, well, they work, but there are some there are some caveats. Before we start, just so you're aware, Splunk does have its own language model that uh, I don't know if it's still in beta, uh, but it's real close. If you are a Splunk Cloud customer, you can talk about getting access to it. And instead of using ChatGPT, you'll use their Splunk language model. And in theory, it's going to be better. Um, I don't have that, I'm not a cloud subscriber, I don't work for Splunk, so we'll just use ChatGPT. So let's go over to ChatGPT, I'm already logged in here, and what I have found, the best way, it is an art form to query ChatGPT. The more specific you can be, the better. So we wanna to try to give it as much information as possible. So let's write here, say, uh, write me a Splunk, SPL query that searches my core my core light logs for the 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 IP address that is the that that initiates most connections to different machines the most connections to other IP addresses, i.e. source IP to dest IP. So I'm basically gonna write it out. I have not checked this, how well it's gonna work, but I'm basically saying, hey, give me a Splunk query. I wanna search the correlate logs for an IP address that generates the most connections to the IP address. In my mind, I'm gonna be looking at, all right, we got IP source and destinations, and they come in tuples, and we wanna know the source IP that talks to the most amount of destination IPs. Let's see what happens. I run that query, and it's gonna come back. And it's going to write it out. I can already tell you, this is going to work. Um, now, remember, it's never always perfect. It may not be the most optimized, but honestly, it's not bad. I don't know that I'd end up writing this head one, but I can see why they're doing the head one, because I said, give me the top. So thereby, that's what it's doing. I can copy this code, but I'd read this. And it's going to tell you, look for the index equals correlate uh, logs and source type equals correlate. Unfortunately, it wasn't smart enough to know that my logs that I'm looking at, don't. this isn't gonna work. The rest of this information is good, but not my index and my source type. And that's what I have found the most is, most of the time, it won't even bother to tell me the index. You should say your index, and then it'll define the source type. Uh, or it'll say, insert your own source type. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna copy the code. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do a search. I'm gonna make a minor modification. I'm gonna come in here. And we're just going to go grab the last 15 minutes worth of logs. I don't want this to take very long. And I, my index is not Corelight. My index is Corelight logs. It's Corelight. So I'll flip that. And it's not Corelight con. Uh, it's not Corelight. It's Corelight con. I could do it to a Corelight star and have it search all of my Corelight logs. So there is a little bit. You're still going to have to know your indexes and source types. Oh, but it's going to look for my source IP, which can basically count by source IP and dest IP. And then it's going to give a distinct count of the dest IP as a unique dest count. It's going to give a sum count, it's total connections, and group by the source IP. And then it's going to sort. I'm going to let that run and let's see what happens. So we can see that this IP address talked to eight different IPs and it did 434 of those. And if we want to, we can actually see this. Let's go values, just because um, it doesn't hurt. Let's go dest IP. And we'll see the eight that it talked to. 
And so we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In my environment, this is most likely the biggest chatter of my machines. So we wrote that query. I think you could have gotten away with not doing two stats commands. You could probably get away just by combining these two into one. But you know what? It worked. It did good enough. All right, let's write another query. This time, I want it to look at my Windows event logs. S write an SPL query, a Splunk SPL query that looks for Windows security event logs and looks for failed authentication after work hour. I didn't even write any commands. Other, I didn't even tell it any. I didn't tell it any indexes, any fields, other than I want to look for my Windows security event logs and look for failed authentication after work hours. Let's see what happens. It knows that the most common uh, security is Windows event log security, and it's going to say, "Hey, look." event code 4625. And if you know your Windows event logs, 4625 is failed authentication attempts. It's going to say uh, index is Windows log. Well, that's not right. But eval, hour, strip time, it's taking the time. It's looking by hour. It says, hey, is the hour less than 9 or greater than 17? This is anything before 9 to be before business hours and after 17 to be after 5 o'clock. So it's basically saying, hey, if your time is between five uh, before 9 in the morning and after 5 p.m., and then we're going to do a stats count by time account name source IP. This looks like an interesting query. It just might work. So we're going to jump over. And this time we're going to do, I have to go grab my stuff, which is index equals bots v3 source paste that. Unfortunately, that doesn't work for me. We're actually, you know what, I'm just going to go event code 4625. I'm doing a really bad query here, but I don't care. All time. What do you know? It found him. Doesn't have a source IP. But we saw the computer name. Um, we might need to go look at some of these fields. So, I mean, if I went and did a had 10 ran it in verbose mode i could probably find out what the real the actual names of these fields are so there's my event logs and so there would be my computer name the device i don't know if it's going to tell me if it's not remote you're not going to get that These are application logs, so we're going to want to look at Windows security logs. That is the problem if you don't have the right stuff here. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to do vet log. Now, if I run this, I've got myself a running query. Oops, source. Is it source? <sighs> there we go. Source. So the big thing is you just got to know your source types here. But the main part of the SPL queries are all written there. And I can see exactly when these all failed. And you can see they are taking place before business hours. If I change this to less than 9 and greater than, let's just turn this to 10, I bet I'm going to get some other events. In this case, there may just not be enough failed. We'll just take out the time. It's still, so we just look at the events. Anyway. Garbage in, garbage out. But that worked. It wrote the query. This would have worked if I had more Windows event logs. Guess there's just not many failed Windows events in my little bots data set. All right, we're going to do another one. And this one I tested 
We'll see if I can write it again the same way. It was really cool. I talk about stats and how stats is amazing and you should never use the join command. There is very little reasons to use join. Use stats. When you have two different source types, use stats. You know what? ChatGPT understands that. I'm going to tell it, write an SPL Splunk command to look at my Corelight con logs and my Amazon, uh, my Palo Alto firewall logs and provide me the IP address that is the destination that receives the most most IP traffic, i.e. source IP. Write that. And look what it did. Perfect. It said, hey, your index is Corelight Logs or your index is Palo Alto logs, source type is Corelight Con, or source type is Palo Alto. Now, I will tell you, there is one little bug here. I can already see it, but it's pretty close. Stat sum bytes is total bytes by dest IP. It's now using that dest IP to join these two sets of logs together because these have a source IP, these have a source IP. What does stats do? It's a join command, but it's much more efficient. It doesn't have the limitations that join has. I'm, I'm an advocate for not using join. Anyway, stats, sort, total bytes, head one. Boom. This works almost. Just remember your Boolean logic. Index equals correlate logs or, and so you need to do parentheses. Otherwise, it's going to read. Without these parentheses, it'll be anything that's Corelite logs or anything that's Palo Alto logs and Corelite con, which will never happen because my Palo Alto don't have that, or anything that's Palo Alto traffic. Now I'm going to have to change these, like my index would need to be Corelite. And my index would probably be Pan and Corelite con, Palo Alto traffic. I don't have Palo Alto traffic, so this is going to be, it's, it's going to still work but you're not going to get the uh, Palo Alto logs coming back. Anyway, and this would be some, there's another right field, so it's going to be bytes in. Bytes. Oh, is it bytes out? What, what's my field? Anyway, I, I have to figure out what that bytes field is. So there'll be a little modification, head 10. Hmm, there are no missed bytes. These legs don't have any bytes. Well, you're not gonna be getting data in then if you don't have any bytes. So it, again, it, guess that you had bytes in and you you think you would so clearly this data source of mine should be cleaned up but anyway this worked chat gpt got me most of the way and that's what i have found for any of my coding projects chat gpt is not always going to give you the 100 percent what you need but it'll get you really close and so i hope this helps you i hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a splunk ninja and that it helps continue your growth in in your uh, in your career. Anyway, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Spread this around. We love to see the channel keep growing so we can keep giving these videos. Anyway, have a good one.